I'm Don. Welcome to Church of Making Your Day. Coming this way is my beautiful wife, Natasha Alexander. In her Ferrari outfit, Michael Kors Ferrari. <laughs> um, okay, so we're heading into chapter 44. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, I come before you so thankful, Lord God, that we can again read your word, which changes lives. Open our minds, our hearts, and our spirits. And God, we just pray that you'd end this war soon. Natasha's got family there. There's people she has no idea if they're alive or dead. It's just, it's just unbelievable. So please, Lord, do something. You could end it in a split second if you wanted to. So we just pray that you look down on us and have mercy and grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Shall we? Yeah, and okay. I would like uh, to, uh, to say a few words about Don because this week we're celebrating his uh, birthday and he's turning his big 65. <laughs> <laughs> hey, she doesn't like this, but I got three letters when you turn 65. O L D. Oh, don't say that. Come on. It's all about your heart, right? And right. about your soul that, that it's still there. If you if you still beating. If you compare eternity with sixty five, yeah. What is sixty five? It's a drop. It's a drop. Yeah. It's nothing. Except when you wake up in the morning and then <laughs> and then there's a you know, hard to get out of bed, hard to get to the bathroom. Oh, we don't think about that, right? Right. We think about your spirit and most importantly your beautiful white gallons that are going to bring you to eternity and then you're gonna look down at sixty five years and be like, Man, I did good, but I just need, wish That I was just nothing. Yeah, it was nothing, and I wish I just like did a little bit more every day because even this particular time when we here on Earth allow us to make our gallons bright and white. All right. So Amen. remember that, and the word that related to today's chapter, chapter forty-four of Genesis, is repentance. And repentance in your actions, repentance in your words, repents of what you do and how you do it, brings you closer and closer to God. We have to understand this. You have to repent and sin no more. That's what's going to clear your beautiful white gowns. So we're going to look at the chapter 44 today. Remember, we talk about uh, probably three, four chapters right now about the same story that lasts so many chapters because of significance of that, mm -hmm. right? So we went through betrayal, we went through forgiveness, and finally we're going through repentance. And repentance is probably one of the most dramatic things that, that you can do in a good way to your soul as soon as you go and sin no more, as soon as you're not repeating this. Because what happened, if you're repeating this, it becomes part of you. So your gun's not going to get any wider and brighter. But if you get rid of it, you're not doing this anymore. That suddenly your soul is going on a different level. So if you're going to look in the energy wise, which we eventually all will, that you will see that you suddenly you're gone when another shade. Remember 50 shades of gray? Well, that's pretty much what we're going to getting less gray. 50, time, shade, 50 shades of white, right? So right. we're getting brighter and brighter, lighter and lighter. So repentance that is going to be described in chapter today is super important. Uh, please look at your life. Please look at your actions. Please look at your words and um, see what needs to be done in what areas you have to repent and do no more. No repetition of that that affects your soul. That's all matters to God, right? And it's not about your neighbor, it's not about someone else, it's about you and each and every one. The first thing is what you can do help yourself. Because if you're not gonna help yourself, you can't help others. So remember that. So get strong yourself, and with your strengths, you can help others. So. Your, your success is going to help everybody, and your failure is not going to help anybody. So keep that in mind, and let's talk about repentance today. Let's rumble. Chapter you know, 44. Uh, we're 44, but you know what I want to start in? I want yeah. to start just, um, we just watched um, Murray's, right? And this uh, 34, um, 43, 34. And he took and sent messes. What's that? Meals unto them from before him. But Benjamin's mess was five times so much as any of theirs. And they drank and were merry with him. 
Why was that? Why did Benjamin, the one brother, right? There's 10 brothers here. Benjamin's 11, Joseph's 12. Why did, why did Joseph do that, do you think? Maybe make them a little jealous? See where they're really at, right? Why would he give Benjamin, not double portion, five times? Because he's testing. He's testing their hearts. He's testing their minds, right? Are you going to get jealous at Benjamin? Are you going to give up on Benjamin? Because more, there's more to come here, a lot more in this chapter, right? Yeah. Uh, they ate, drank, and were merry. Why? Because they're getting run through the ringer here, right? I mean, they're taking their uh, smaller brother into Egypt. If he doesn't come back, their father's dead, and, and they know it, right? Just of a broken heart. And so they're going through it. We'll see. Major tests. Right? Yeah, so repentance, it's interesting that we talk about repentance. Repentance coming from you testing yourself. And of course, life, life testing you as well. Life throwing you things where you should become stronger, better, and more in alignment with God. So when he is giving Benjamin five times as much food, and remember Benjamin and Joseph, two of them were sons of Rachel that... Uh, uh, being being loved so much, right? Right. So uh, being loved by Jacob, by Israel, so much. So he's trying to see if that enviness what they have towards uh, towards him is still there. He he is still there, right? right? And he's testing them, and and yet they all have been drinking, and they were happy, right? They're having a good time. So another way they passed the test. Right. Like, They're repenting. And then with life, when life is throwing things in you, when somebody knocks to your door, when things are uh, going not in the right way, it's all test. And if you pass that test, that means you can uh, spring to another level. And that's basically what uh, Joseph does here, is testing them, his brothers. Right. Because remember, at the end of the story, he can literally kill them. Right. Or if he can forgive them, and he will can continue them as a one union family. Right. There's a two choices here. He has power. Now right. he has power. Right. And he can do about anything he wants with these guys. Yep. Very All he has to do is get them off their knees. They keep bowing to him, right? Yeah. Over and over, right? <laughs> well, that was, uh, remember, prophecy? <laughs> that was the, the deal. Dream, the dream? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, 44. And he commanded the steward of his house, saying, fill them in sack with food as much as they can carry, and put every man's money in his sack's mouth, and put my cup, the silver cup, in the sack's mouth of the youngest, and his corn money. And he did according to the word that Joseph had spoken. Now, a lot of times these Egyptians, I'm sure that Joseph didn't do it, but a cup like this, the king's cup, Joseph's cup, you steal that, uh, you're going, your head's coming off. And that's all there is to it. They would use that like they'd pour the wine and do weird divination things, trying to see the future, right? Very important cup. So, well, also, when I mentioned about this cup, notice that was a silver cup, not right. gold, but silver. And um, my mom, uh, she was a history major, and she mentioned to me that in those days, when people go into battle, mm -hmm. uh, then um, you can consider the, the officers right they have silver cups right and of course the simple soldiers or wherever they are they didn't have money to have silver cups right so it's interesting when they go in through some um, wilderness right and let's say there is a uh, some water to drink right like some river or some uh, some other source creek, of water, something. some creek right then uh, what they noticed that that uh, if the creek had some kind of illness, because sometimes it's bacteria or so, right. that the soldiers, simple soldiers, they, they got sick. But the officer, they did not. With the silver. Because cup. the silver, yeah, the silver has uh, Takes out uh, got curious. this uh, feature of basically disinfecting the water that the officer would be drinking for. Right. So there's an actual interesting purpose of that. 
for them to carry this and because that has such a special feature and of course at that time nobody can explain anything right now right. we know that the silver has this particular uh property pro property to uh disinfect but at that time obviously nobody knew it right so right. uh people been very kind of re religiously told that, that and uh, uh saying that okay well this cup is so important right, right. And of course, every single officer had their own cups and they carry it. And it was, it was another way, it was a story behind that. It's not just like a simple cup that uh, right. you have tons of them in your kitchen. Exactly. Right? A very interesting story behind all of that. And two. Two. And put my cup, the now silver. We didn't that. Uh, three oh, nine. we did? Uh -huh, three. Okay, the cup. And it was, oh, yeah. And uh -huh. two, okay. Or, um, um, vengeance. As soon as the morning was the light, the men were sent away, they and their asses. And when they were gone out of the city, not yet far off, Joseph said unto his steward, Up, follow after the men. And when thou dost overtake them, say unto them, Wherefore have ye rewarded evil for good? Now, how are they feeling? Terrible again, right? This is more the repentance. <laughs> hey, repentance on steroids here, okay? Imagine they're thinking again, right? Is not this it in which my Lord drinketh? And whereby, indeed, he divineth? Ye have done evil. And so doing, Benjamin's head should come off. And he overtook them, and he spake unto them these same words. And they said unto him, Wherefore, saith my Lord these words, God forbid that thy servants should do according to this thing. Behold, the money which we found in our sacks, mouths, we brought again unto thee out of the land of Canaan the last time. How then should we steal out of thy Lord's house silver or gold with whomsoever, here we go, you know, uh, this could be bad, with whomsoever of thy servants it be found, both let him die, and we also will be my Lord's bondmen. And he said, now also, let it be according unto your words. He with whom it is found shall be my servant, and ye shall be blameless. Then they speedily took down every man his sack to the ground and opened every man his sack. And he searched and began at the eldest and left at the youngest. And the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. Now I wanna kind of cover something that Natasha, we were talking about this morning while we were studying, watching. Um, remember, um, what was it about Rachel? Rachel got, no. Oh yeah, uh, if you remember back then when um, Jacob uh, took Rachel and Leah back home, then Rachel, um, I don't know why she did this, but she took a golden, um, some kind of golden... From Laban. Right, That's golden right. Uh, whatever statues that he had. Because his Laban, idols. Yes, idol, kind of idol, idols, because uh, obviously he had his own... Um, he had his own religion, he religion had Religion and yeah. abuse. So she took it because obviously, not because she won those idols, but because they were super expensive. And... You know, she and her sister, they were also very upset that uh, the way uh, he treated he them. treated them and his he, daughters, he make a deal and literally make money for himself right. by using their lives, you know. So uh, and at that time, she kind of stole uh, <laughs> actual stole. <laughs> yeah, took the idols. Yeah. So, and what was said, wherever I find the idols, let that one die. Right? Rachel. What happened to Rachel? She died. Right? She died giving birth to Benjamin. She didn't have a nice long life. Now they curse Benjamin here. Right? 
their own, his own brethren. Mm -hmm. Say, okay, let the one where this uh, silver chalice is found, let him be killed, right? Mm -hmm. The people of Benjamin later, a few hundred years later, um, molested a woman to death, a concubine of a guy. He cut her up in 12 pieces and he sent every piece or 11 pieces, whatever it was, mm -hmm. because Benjamin was a tribe. But it might have been Ephraim and Manasseh, so it might have been 12. But I think it said 12, no big deal. What happened was they all got a piece of this woman that got raped to death by the Benjaminites. Guess what happened to the Benjaminites? They were basically genocided off the earth. I think they left out of what, 40 or 50,000 men? They left like five or 600 men mm -hmm. because they finally realized we're going to eliminate one of our tribes. We're going to completely eliminate our brother Benjamin off the face of the earth. So you really got to watch what you say, right? You got to watch your words. I remember at the beginning was a word, right? The word the is word. the beginning of beginnings because the vibration of this word affects, affects you, affects other. Remember, our body is about 90% of water, and water is highly sensitive on any vibration, especially word. So right. when you read the word of God, this is what affects your soul. And that's why it needs to be done on a continuous basis. And, and another place that they spoke their condemnation, when the, uh, when the Kenites, you know, the leaders of the Jews, the Kenites, um, said crucify him about Jesus Christ to Pilate. Pilate said... You know, my wife's had dreams about this man. He's innocent. Everybody knows he's innocent. Mm -hmm. He's a good man, mm -hmm. right? Uh, how about I give you, you know, uh, Jesus Christ. At the, at the um, Passover time, it was um, a ceremony to let one prisoner go free. Mm -hmm. Why don't we just let him go? He's not that bad of a guy, mm -hmm. right? Crucify him. Get rid of him. They hated him so bad. What do I do about giving you a prisoner? Give us Barabbas, the murderer. Mm -hmm. We'll take a murderer over an innocent man. Sounds like governments today. But anyway, they took Barabbas. They crucified Christ. Pilate said, I'm washing my hands of this. I know this man's innocent, right? Of his blood. What did the Jews say? Let his blood be on us and our children. Ever heard of World War II? Ever heard of seven million Jews exterminated, you got to watch your mouth, don't you? You got to watch what you pray for. You might get it, right? Yeah, it's very right. important. I think we, we take it seriously enough when we speak the word and we are guilty. Of I know I don't. You got to learn that. Yeah, we, when we're saying the wrong thing and when we're saying the wrong thing, especially in anger. Right. right, in anger, something happened, and you you didn't even mean it, but in yeah. anger that you really did. Right, because your, Why do you say your it? anger has so much energy in it. Right. So when you say that word, you literally speak word over that person's soul, right? Over that person's energy, grinding it down, draining it down. But most important, you're draining yourself down. Right. So when you say a word, is so important, and, and, and you're in control of it. Right. You're the one who can right. say to yourself, stop now, and right. don't go there. This is not the good area to be, and um, clean it up yourself, clean it up your mouth, clear up your language, because it affects, affects you, it affects loved ones, it affects, any, affects anybody, you right. know? And most importantly, it affects your soul, which you don't want to be affected. Yeah, if you're cleaning up your mouth, you're cleaning up your mind. Right? Very true. Right, where are we? Okay, and we at uh, uh, sorry, I lost it. Into silver and gold at uh, nine. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. With whomsoever of the servants it be found, both let him die, and we also right. He, you know, he, he brought the prophecy upon. Right. Him. We also will be my lord's bondmen. We'll be your slaves. And he said, now also, let it be according unto your words. He with whom it is found shall be my servant, and ye shall be blameless. Then they speedily took down every man his sack to the ground, 
and opened every man his sack. And he searched and began at the eldest as usual and left at the youngest. And the, and the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. Then they rent their clothes, ripped. They ripped their clothes off and laid it every man his ass and returned back to Egypt, the city. And Judah and his brethren came to Joseph's house for he was yet there and they fell before him on the ground. How many times is this? Two or three? That they what, did what? On their faces before Joseph, just like the prophecy, just like God prophesied. And Joseph said unto them, what deed is this that ye have done? What ye not that such a man as I can certainly divine? Don't you know I know what you're doing? And Judah said, what shall we say unto my Lord? They're at their wit's end. What shall we speak? Or how shall we clear? How do we clear ourselves on this? Right? God hath found out the iniquity of thy servants. What was the iniquity? Was this cup in the bag the iniquity of his servants? I don't think so. I think it was uh, trying to kill their brother and then selling him to Egypt. That was the iniquity. And we are my Lord's servant, both we and he also with whom the cup is found. And he said, God forbid that I should do so. But the man in whose hand the cup is found, he shall be my servant. And as for you, get you up in peace unto your father. Get ye up, I, was, I, I thought I would say go in peace. Get ye up in peace unto thy father. Go to your father. Then Judah came near unto him and said, Oh my Lord, that, that's not going to happen. Let thy servant, I pray thee, speak a word in my Lord's ears, and let not thine anger burn against thy servant, for thou art even as Pharaoh. They're probably considering him greater than Pharaoh now. He knows so much. My Lord, ask his servants, saying, Have ye a father or a brother? And we said unto my Lord, We have a father an old man and a child of his old age, a little one, and his brother is dead. Who are they talking about? Benjamin and Joseph. And he alone is left of his mother, and his father loveth him. And thou saidest unto thy servants, bring him down unto me, that I may set mine eyes upon him. And we said unto my Lord, the lad cannot leave his father. For if he should leave his father, his father would die. That would just push him over the edge. And thou saidest unto thy servants, except your youngest brother come down with you, ye shall see my face no more. And it came to pass when we came up unto thy servant, thy father, we told him the words of my Lord. And our father said, go again and buy us a little food. So he finally gave up. And we said, we cannot go down if our youngest brother be with us. Then will we go down. For we may not see the man's face except our youngest brother be with us. And the servant, my father, said unto us, Ye know that my wife bare me two sons, and the one went out from me. And I said, Surely he is torn in pieces, and I saw him not since. That's what they told him. And if ye take this also from me, and mischief befall him, ye shall bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave, miserable life. Now, therefore, when I come to thy servant, my father, 
and the lad be not with us, seeing that his life is bound up in the lad's life, it shall come to pass when he seeth that the lad is not with us, that he will die. And thy servants shall bring down the gray hairs of thy servant, our father, with sorrow to the grave. Sin has implications, right? Payback. They're getting major payback right now. For thy servant became surety for the lad unto my father, saying, If I bring him not unto thee, then I shall bear the blame to my father forever. Now therefore I pray thee, let thy servant abide instead of the lad, a bondman to my Lord, and let the lad go up with his brethren. Let's get him back to his father. For how shall I go up to my father and the lad be not with me? Lest preadventure I see the evil that shall come upon my father. And that evil is he's going to die. Yeah, and, and, hey, that's it. and how interested that um, this is another test. Right. Another test. Another test that Joseph gave to the to, to the brother to see how important his younger brother to them as well. Because remember, it's only him and his brother Benjamin from Rachel. Right. So there's a clearly right. a clearly separation between Leah children and um Rachel children. And he wants to see if they stay in the same mindset when they send him to uh to Egypt in slavery. Right. And the same, why would they care about this little brother if they would say in the same evil spirit as they were when they sold him into Egypt or they changed, right? Or now uh, the soul is in a different level. So the soul and the thinking are different, right? Right. The compassion, the caring, they, the, they don't want their father to die. They don't want to leave this child in Egypt, right? right? Even though... You know, obviously they see they leave, they would leave him not in slavery but in good hands. Right. But they still have compassion to their father, knowing that they already hurt uh, their father once, and they know that this com this would kill him. So they don't want to go that road. Mm -hmm. And basically, it's another confirmation to Joseph that this is part of the repentance process that he was trying to bring him back to this relationship that they lost. Right. What is life? A test. Life is a test. Period. Yeah. I remember TV at night. This Indian would come on, Indian head would come on the TV when the station was done, right? Because we had, we had like 10 stations, that's it, right? Mm -hmm. And there would be a beep, beep. This is a test. For the next 60 seconds, the emergency broadcasting is conducting a test. Beep, 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 right? Mm -hmm. This is a test. Okay, that's what this life is, a test. Good or evil, which way are you going to turn? Sometimes it's not that easy to turn that evil into good, right? Got to get rid of it. That's what's happening here. They're getting, um, what do you want to call it, ripped up? It's like tearing out a root and you're, you know? Cleaning up. Cleaning up. It's not easy. Not easy. This is not an easy life, right? Christian life, very simple life. Five-year-old child can understand it, right? There's nothing easy about it, right? Especially nowadays with all this evil that just permeates. So you have to hang in there. You got to get in the Word of God and stay in it. Yeah. Right? You have to be able to detach all this that was in you. Remember, we're all born sinners. Why is that? Because we're all in alignment with our parents' um, initial energy vibration common from the first earth age. And with all the sins that we have, we can't go back to God and say, hey, that's what I got. That's what <laughs> right. I'm giving back to you. That's what you're presenting, God, a bunch of, <clears throat> forget it. If you remember, God gave, God gave three um, talents, and we had this story previously read. And the one a person received this one talent, kept this one talent, right, and gave it back to you. Because he said, Master, I knew that you are a powerful master. Right. And, uh, you know, I was afraid to do anything else. So this is what I receive and this is what I give to you. Think about your soul. This is what you got from God and what you want to give him back. Just what you received from first to stage. Just was the same 
uh, energy vibration, how God going to be happy about it? Well, he will not. Mm -hmm. Remember, God said, from you, uh, from, from the one that have, it's going to be given more. And the one who doesn't have, going to be taken away even, even what you have. Right? right? And then another person who had two talents and multiply them by two, here's your soul coming to you and you brought yourself and let's say halfway right. to God, right? right. So you what, what's your, you, you get acknowledgement of God on that halfway that you did. And then another talent, a person that received five talent and he multiplied them by the same amount. It means your soul come to you. And then from this soul that maybe was very dark shaded, suddenly you made the soul shine bright and white. But what do you think acknowledgement of God going to be? Remember that what in that story in that in, in that um, uh, pre, uh, uh, preaching story of Jesus, he That's said, true. and then in that case, God gave this person everything. Right. Right. Well done, good and faithful servant. And that's all it is about. Right. And we just want to say one more time, happy birthday, Donald. We love you so much. We're going to have a know. little celebration today, not much, because we deeply suffer about what's going on in the world right now. And really, really hope that um, the power and the mind of the people are going to bring um, bring all of us to to peace. I think we, we are the, with the age of our life that we should not fight weapons any longer. We're there intelligent. Go. Sounds we, good to me. <laughs> we're intelligent. We're powerful on a way that our minds are powerful. We um we, we should have God in our side and our minds to sit down and have conversation versus uh, have and come with conclusion and decision together versus uh, fight each other and kill each other. Um, remember, God. Sounds good. God didn't give you soul for the soul to be killed. The soul given to you for the soul to be improved and returned to God. So literally, if the soul is dead, if I mean the body is dead and soul cannot improve any longer, the soul is going to return to God without this improvement, without what it, the soul was sent into this birth for. So what's good in that? What's good to anybody? Not anybody, not, not to God whatsoever, not to yourself. Right. So we're praying and we ask God um, to guide these people to all of us come the peace in this world and we pray and by the name of Jesus and happy birthday mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you happy yeah. 65 <laughs> yeah good old 65 I can't drive 65 um let me close too with another thing that um came to me you know if I say up you say down right the opposite if I say um you know um black you say white if I say love you say hate right wrong the opposite of love is not hate hate is an emotion can be a very strong emotion. It can be dealt with. Look at the apostle um, Saul, who became Paul. His hatred became what? Greatest love on earth, right? He went all over the world. What if he feared? You can't work with fear. You can't have fear. The opposite of love is not hate, it's fear. What does the Bible say? Perfect love cast out what? All hate? No, all fear. So you're gonna watch that fear. You've got to come into the love, right? Amen.